Well, one of the comments that he's made consistently is that, you know, we're not over yet. We're on it. We're not giving up. Don't, I mean, not these, these exact words, but you get the impression that he both wants his audience to understand that they are driven by one mission to bring inflation down, and they don't really care about anything else. So one thing that they obviously are not concerned about is a recession, and it might be a recession that uh, affects uh, a lot of different kinds of companies. For us, we have a combination of stocks that are better in environments where there's you know, faster growth and economies are booming, and those stocks that are better in defensive, uh, for defensive positioning. And I think that if you're a labor-intensive company and you're multinational and you have pressure of wages all around the world, that's a time to be careful. I mean, as investors, we're looking carefully at our portfolio and where the margins are and where the leverage points are because, you know, labor intensity is something that, you know, you can't control easily. And even though companies are saying they're holding back on hiring or perhaps letting go, we just heard Lyft is laying off a lot of people. You know, when wages are going higher and the market doesn't seem to be able to control for that, the job market remains very tough. And that's been true through COVID, COVID and perhaps because of COVID. But that's that's an area that we feel requires, I think, more attention and where I think uh, in the process of going through our portfolio and thinking about that, you know, company by company. So, Kara, I mean, you're saying you're going company by company, but let's talk a little bit more broadly, sector by sector. There's some sectors that you're feeling like you might want to bail out. Um, not only are we getting this from the Fed, that they're planning to raise the ultimate level of rates higher than expected, but the dollar seems to be back on the move as well, up 2% this week, up about a percent and a half today. Yeah, exactly. So, well, I, I wouldn't say we're bailing out of any sectors. You know, we're not wildly overweight uh, any names are definitely underweight consumer staples, which we think are expensive in energy where, you know, I think the commodity price, you know, can move any which way. And right now we're not willing to make a bet. But I, I, I do take your point that for multinationals, because the dollar strength and the dollar strength isn't isn't going away. I mean, other other countries are raising rates like UK did today. That doesn't mean the U.S. isn't. We did and, and we will again. Uh, and, and we heard that. So it's the, the fact that we're more likely to enter a recession, unlikely to have a soft landing, definitely going to see contraction in profit margins. The fourth quarter isn't going to be great. We heard that across the board from many companies, particularly in technology, communications, um, but, you know, other names. And so perhaps healthcare is the place to look. Um, maybe financials, certain types of financials could could see a... Um, you know, a, a push because of interest rates. But yeah, it's not easy. This is a minefield out there. And going in too early because you think the stock's down is, is meaningless. The stock can go down further. Yeah, for everybody at home, by the way, uh, Josh Brown is expected to come. I think he's having some technical difficulties. I know his absence is conspicuous, a silence at least, I'm not hearing him chime in. Before we get <laughs> to our halftime headliner, Jim, uh, I want to ask you, what's your take on energy? Best performing sector today. We're seeing a stock like ConocoPhillips, 52-week high, um, and expectations of higher energy prices, especially with the diesel shortage here in the United States. Yeah, uh, first off, I miss Josh. Where is he? But I'm happy to be on with you and Kerry. <laughs> um, look, energy is something that I believe in quite strongly right now. I've got twice the uh, market weight uh, in the portfolio that I run in energy. Um, frankly, this supply-demand imbalance is just going to go on for quite some time. We've been papering it over with releases from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve that simply can't continue for very long and are not going to continue for very long. And we've had a temporary decline in demand from China COVID shutdowns that I don't know how long they're going to last, but I don't think they're going to last forever. The bottom line is there is demand for more barrels of oil uh, and BTUs of natural gas than is currently being supplied uh, in the globe. So uh, something's got to give. You've got to have supply coming up. And for those people who are saying, well, you know, maybe the war in Ukraine, maybe something will be negotiated, Russian barrels will come on uh, back on the markets. Not so fast. That's not so easily done. It's easily said, not so easily done. Once production is shut in, it's hard to get it going back again. So I see this not as a trade, but as something for the next year or two. We're going to make some money, all of us, uh, in the energy sector. All right. Kerry mentioned energy. I wanted to get your take, Jim. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Downtown Josh Brown. Technical difficulties have been resolved. Josh, always great to see you. I like the look you got going on here today. Um, more importantly, how do you think the markets look? And after what Jay Powell said, the ultimate level potentially higher, what's your view on what's going to be happening for the rest of this year and also what we're going to see in December? 
Uh, that's that's a that's a lot of questions. It's a How lot. Much time we do missed I have? you. Hey, uh, we we spent a lot of time on this show over over the last few years debating w- one specific topic, which was whether or not the rest of the market would be okay if the gigantic Nasdaq uh, tech stocks didn't hold up or or sold off. And we now have an answer to that question, and the answer is yes. Um, when you look at the market cap losses for Amazon, uh, for Microsoft, for Meta, the, these numbers are absolutely gigantic. And yet, if you have a portfolio of stocks that's not just FANG, not just NASDAQ, gigantic company, um, there, there really are a lot of constructive charts, a lot of sectors and sub-industry groups that look absolutely fine. And so I think we could put that question to bed. For me, the story of 2022, at least so far, and we're most of the way through, is the resilience of the stock market in the face of 400 basis points uh, worth of worth of tightening um, and and a lot of really, really rough geopolitical news. And I think you have to stand back and you have to say, look, if the S&P goes out where it is for the year, we'll look back on this and say it was a pretty lousy year, both for stock investors and for bond investors. However, the wheels did not come off. And there were a lot of places that you could be and do okay. And so one of the big themes, I think, going into the end of the year um, is that you really want to stick with what's worked. I, I just don't see any kind of huge reversal in some of the hardest hit areas. I think we'll have some tax law selling in November okay. and in a lot of December.